Uh, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be looking at is simplifying rational expressions with multiple operations. Up until this point in this unit, what we've done is looked at how do we multiply, divide, add, and subtract uh, rational expressions, and that's often done by the process of factoring, canceling out common factors, and in the case of adding and subtracting, having a common denominator. So it's an ongoing process of doing a number of things. In this particular case, you're going to see a combination of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and a few things that we need to remember in order to simplify are that we need to remember the order of operations, or in other words, uh, bed mass. Just make sure you, you do operations in brackets first, then exponents, uh, then divide, multiply from left to right, and add and subtract from left to right. Uh, what you're going to want to do also is focus on simplifying one operation at a time. Don't try and multiply and add and subtract all at one time. Uh, it will make it complicated. Uh, and two and three are kind of uh, things that need to be an ongoing process. Uh, essentially what you're going to want to do is when it, whenever it's possible, you're going to want to have an ongoing process of factoring because that's going to help us cancel out common factors in the case of multiplying and dividing or uh, recognizing what our lowest common denominator is when we're adding and subtracting. Uh, what you're also going to want to do is throughout the entire process is state any new non-permissible values that arise throughout um, while you're doing this. Okay. So, in this particular case, we're going to look at, I think, three examples. Uh, in our first example here, what you'll notice is that we have two uh, as far as our operations go, we have two separate operations. We have a multiplying and we have a subtracting. Uh, and as we know, this multiplying is going to have to come before the subtracting. Okay, And before we do any of that, what you're going to want to do, so we identify the first um, operation, is just factor as much as possible so we can start stating our MPVs and making this into simpler form if possible. Uh, so as far as factoring this goes, uh, what we're going to have is, in our first rational expression, uh, x minus 6 over and that denominator can factor to x minus 4 and x minus 7. Uh, in our second rational expression, that numerator, uh, which you could factor using decomposition, the box method, a variety of different methods, uh, I'm just going to use de our, uh, guess and check in this particular case. Uh, what we have from that, as far as factoring goes, uh, we would have... <clears throat> I believe this, uh, because what will happen there is that our outside and our inside will make the outside is minus 10x, the inside is plus 3x, and that leaves us with a minus 7x as our middle term, uh, and 2x times x as our first term is 2x squared, and 3 times negative 5 as our second term is, uh, as our last term is negative 15. So those are the factors, but you could review other methods of doing that. Um, as far as our denominator, that Next expression goes, we have a common factor of x, and we're left with 2x plus 3, and that's going to be times, and I'm going to start representing times with a dot, just to make it uh, clear the separation between x's, or variables, and multiplication. Our numerator is x, and that is over, uh, I believe it is x minus 1 and x minus 7 as far as our factors go. Uh, in this particular case, we have a number of non-permissible values. x minus 4 is a unique factor. Uh, x minus 7 is also a unique factor. Uh, x unto itself is a unique factor. Uh, 2x plus 3 is a unique factor, and then we have another unique factor of x minus 1. Uh, so our non-permissible values, there are going to be five of them. Uh, maybe I'll just list them up here. Uh, x cannot equal 4 is a non-permissible value. Uh, x cannot equal 7 is another non-permissible value. Uh, x cannot equal 0 is a third non-permissible value. Uh, x cannot equal negative 3 halves is a fourth non-permissible value. And finally, our fifth non-permissible value is that x cannot equal 1. Okay, so those are our non-permissible values for this particular question. Uh, since we're focusing in on the multiplication part of this rational expression, uh, what we're going to do is cancel out any common factors because that's how we multiply. Uh, in this particular case, we have a lot of pairs of common factors. The 2x plus 3s are common factors. Uh, the x's are common factors. Uh, so that's two pairs of common factors. So that can simplify to, or this entire thing can simplify to, uh, x minus 6 all over x minus 4 times x minus 7 minus uh, x minus 5 all over 
x minus 1 and x minus 7. So we simplified the multiplication part of this rational expression. Uh, next, as far as our next operation, which is subtracting goes, we need a common denominator. Our common denominator in this particular case, they both have an x minus 7, so that's one part of our common denominator. Uh, you don't have to write this step, but I'll just identify what it is. Uh, you're going to need x minus 7. Uh, in the case of the first rational expression, uh, we have an x minus 4 factor, and our second one we have an x minus 1. So that's going to be our common denominator, as I reference common denominator, or write just cd as we go. And in order to create our common denominator, our first rational expression needs to be multiplied by x minus 1. And our second rational expression needs to be multiplied by its missing factor, which is uh, x minus 4. All right. Uh, the next step, and I'll just write cd for common denominator, uh, is to expand the numerator. We need to expand the numerator uh, before we can try and factor it and simplify as we go. Uh, so as far as our numerator goes, if I expand this part here, uh, what I'll be left with is x squared minus 7x plus 6, and then I have a big fat minus here, and we're going to have to subtract or take the opposite of whatever this happens to be, so you just have to be careful. Uh, and we have x squared minus 9x plus 20, and that is all over, I'm not going to write the, the denominator, I'm just going to write cd for common denominator. Uh, the next thing we need to do in order to collect like terms is expand this numerator and just be careful. Uh, so in this particular case we have x squared minus 7x plus 6 uh, minus x squared plus 9x minus 20, all over a common denominator. Uh, finally, what we can do in our numerator is collect like terms. You'll see the x squareds cancel out. As far as our other terms go, what we'll be left with is uh, 2x minus 14, uh, and that is all over our common denominator. Uh, finally, what we can do is factor our numerator. We have a greatest common factor of 2, and we'll be left with x minus 7, and that's all over our common denominator, which I'll finally actually write our common denominator is x minus 7, x minus 4, and x minus 1. And what you'll notice is finally, uh, because we're having this ongoing process of factoring, simplify, factoring, simplify, uh, etc., etc., we have common factors of x minus 7. Uh, so our simplest form here is 2 over x minus 4 and x minus 1. And that is our simplest form. Uh, in our next particular example, uh, what you'll see is we have multiple fractions, which makes this uh, appear to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, but what's going to make this easier, and then we'll get into the factoring, the non-permissible values, etc. What will make this easier is if we picture this numerator divided by this denominator uh, side by side. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as 1 plus 1 over x. And instead of writing it as a fraction, I'm going to put divided by uh, the denominator of x minus 1 over x. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is first of all simplify the, the operations in brackets. Uh, before we do that, what we can do is state any non-permissible values. You'll see that uh, in each of these expressions we have a denominator of x. So our non-permissible values in this particular case at the moment, and we'll have more later on, is that x cannot equal 0. That's our first non-permissible value. Uh, but you'll see that that's going to get a little bit more uh, intense as we go. Uh, first thing we want to do is, since we're de dealing with uh, adding and subtracting in both of these cases, we need a common denominator. And that common denominator is going to be just x. Uh, but what some of, some of us need to be aware of is that 1 is equivalent to 1 over 1, and x is equivalent to x over 1. So to represent our common denominator of x, what we're going to have to do is multiply this first fraction by x, and also this first fraction or rational expression by x. Uh, so what's going to happen with our green set of brackets is that we are going to have uh, x over x plus 1 over x. And in our second particular, uh, our subtracting here, this numerator uh, is going to be x squared. So it's going to be x squared over x minus 1 over x. Okay. Uh, what you could have done before you did that is actually simplify this to x plus 1 over x uh, divided by x squared minus 1 uh, over x, because we have a common denominator now. Uh, now what we want to do is you could factor next or uh, 
multiply by the reciprocal, I'm going to do the second. So if we multiply by the reciprocal, what we're going to have is that this fraction becomes x over x squared minus 1. And after I factor that, you're going to see that we have a couple new non-permissible values uh, to uh, introduce here. Uh, so if we factor our denominator of our second rational expression, that's going to be a difference of squares of x plus 1 and x minus 1. And what that has done, as we have a constant process of stating non-permissible values, factoring, simplifying, etc., uh, it introduces two new non-permissible values of x cannot equal negative 1 and also x cannot equal 1. So we have three non-permissible values. Uh, and now, I apologize, I said I was going to represent times in with a dot, so I'll do that now. Uh, we have x plus 1 over x, and what you'll notice is we have a common, we have a, a number of common factors actually. These x plus 1s are common factors, and so are these x's. So all we're left with in our numerator uh, is, since all the common factors have been divided out, it's going to be left over with a 1, and that's over x minus 1, and that is our simplest form. Uh, in our last example, what we're going to be doing is just looking at a word problem and kind of how we can use word problems to represent rational expressions. Uh, this word problem says a right triangle has a hypotenuse of length uh, x plus 2 over 3. So first thing we generally want to do when we're dealing with word problems is draw a picture. Uh, it says a right triangle. So a right triangle is uh, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle. So here is something that approximates a right triangle. It says the hypotenuse has a length of x plus 2 over 3. And it says that a leg has a length of x over 6. It says, what is a simplified expression for the length of the other leg? So what we're looking at for is, what is that leg, or an expression for that leg? Uh, as we know from the Pythagorean relationship, if I wanted to call this a, uh, b, and c, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or in other words, if I wanted to simplify for what b is, we could subtract a squared. Uh, so we have b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. And as most of us know, after we take the square root, we're going to have that b is equal to the square root of c squared minus a squared. So if I just replace a with x over 6 and c with x plus 2 over 3, at least we'll have the beginnings of how we can represent this. So uh, b is equal to the square root of c squared, which in this particular case is uh, x plus 2 over 3 squared minus a squared, which in this case is uh, x over 6 squared. Uh, what we know is that anything squared is that times itself. So in this particular case, uh, what we have is, and some people might be helped by doing this, okay, uh, as we simplify or expand this particular uh, set, what we're going to have is b is equal to the square root of x plus 2 times x plus 2. If I wanted to expand it, would be x squared plus 4x plus 4. And that's all over 3 times 3, which is 9. And that is minus, and this particular uh, Rational expression simplifies to x squared over 36. Uh, last thing we have to do is we have a subtracting here, so we need a common denominator. A common denominator in this particular case will be 36. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is multiply my first uh, rational expression by 4. And I don't have to multiply my second rational expression. So my first rational expression uh, will become, so b is equal to, in this particular case, we have to multiply the entire numerator by 4. So that's going to be uh, 4x squared plus 16x plus 16 uh, all over 36 minus x squared over 36. And maybe what I'll do is just rewrite this. Since now I have a common denominator of 36, I can just rewrite it as minus x squared uh, all over common denominator of 36. As I collect like terms in my numerator, uh, what I'm going to find out is that I have b is equal to the square root of uh, 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 all over 36. Uh, and what we could do, we could factor the numerator, but it's not going to be important because that numerator uh, won't have any common factors with our denominator. So we can make it 3x plus 4 and x plus 4 if we like to. Uh, but as you'll see, that doesn't share any common factors. So either way that you'd like to, uh, your simplest form in this particular case is b is equal to, uh, and what we could do is split up the radicand. So this is the square root of 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 uh, all over the square root of 36. And square root of 36 is 6. So our simplest form 
is b is equal to, or uh, the leg is equal to the square root of 3x squared plus 16x plus 16 all over a denominator of 6.